Hello everybody and welcome back for one final last episode in this Conjuration Tree exploration series using the Ordinator Perk Overhaul. That was a mouthful. I think I'm getting better at this uh, introduction thing. <laughs> uh, finally, right? So, okay, this is it. This is the last episode. So, off camera, I actually went through and uh, filled out the archery tree, how we were talking about doing. Um, I got all these cool little perks here. Uh, namely, I went down this uh, next to leftmost branch. I got Crippling Shot, which slows enemies by 10% for 20 seconds. That stacks. Pinning Shot, which does have a chance to cause a stagger if the target's within 50 feet. Um, and then we took Beacon Talon, which uh, disarms enemies who are power attacking and knocks them down if they're already staggered. And finally, bows deal 25% more damage if the shot strikes the target within two seconds after the bow is fully drawn. And uh, when we're kind of in the heat of the battle, we tend to do this quite often. We pull the draw back as far as it'll go and then let the arrow loose as soon as we get to the full draw. And we're usually pretty close range close enough that uh, the arrow is going to hit the target well within two seconds after the full draw of the bow. Um, so we get 25% more damage. Um, I also took Snipe. Um, it's just, it's, it's too valuable to get uh, that three time critical damage if you haven't shot the target yet or at least within the last 10 seconds. Uh, 10 seconds is a long time to be in battle with anything at this level, so um, that that hardly ever happens. You hardly ever hit the cooldown on that. It's usually just the first, first arrow that you get, but still, three times critical damage, I'll take it. Um, and Lion's Arrow, I also hooked up Electrosphere to that, and I know that Electrosphere wasn't working too well for us with Spell Scribe, but with the bow and arrow, it really seems to work great. Um, it's a nice, it has a nice big uh, hurt box on it. Um, it's easy to hit with it, it moves pretty quickly, and it does a lot of damage. And it's a shock spell, so it gets to take advantage of all those cool shock perks that we have in the, destru in the destruction skill tree. Um, I also took uh, the two levels of Sneak Mastery. Uh, if we get another level up, I'll probably take Sneak Attack. Um, just to kind of give us a little more damage when, when we do land a Sneak Attack. Uh, and I think that's it. I also was able to debug the Forbidden Legend quest. So I got that straightened out. It turns out that I sold uh, Danis Valen's notes to Sabeel. Which is weird that it allowed me to do that, seeing as how that that was a quest item, and I don't know, it, it should have been um, unequipable. I'm sorry, it should have been um, impossible for me to get rid of that out of my inventory. But after doing some set stage finagling and finding um, the notes and getting them back from Sabeel, we're back on the right track. So I think we can continue on with that. I have also been using uh, some different summons just to kind of explore what, what kind of minions we can have. And I ended up with the Dramora Honor Guard. And it looks like they've disappeared. But they're very simple, they're straightforward. They are pretty much just uh, two-handed warriors like the Dramora Lords are. But they have a really cool aesthetic to them. Kind of like a, an Altair, Assassin's Creed type thing going on. They're very cool. Anyway, so I don't mind having these guys follow us. Uh, they're not really great in a sneaky situation, but... They work. There are also some really cool and interesting summons that we haven't touched on in this series. 
um, that I messed around with a little bit. And the summons in this game, uh, not in this game, but in the Apocalypse spell pack, the Nice Ion spell packages, of which these guys are part of, there's some really, really interesting minions that you can summon that do all kinds of really different things. Um, the possibilities go really deep as far as role play and gameplay and all that. <clears throat> but I think I'm going to save that for another series, or at least another video. I think I'm going to do a video guide on some of the Apocalypse spells as well. There have been some people on the Couch Warrior Discord that uh, kind of agree with me that the Apocalypse spell package tends to be more complicated and a little more confusing than the Ordinator Perk Overhaul does. Uh, at times, anyway. So, I, I think that'll be another series that I can do. Is uh, a series of guides on Apocalypse spells. I'm looking forward to that because there's some really cool stuff in there, too. That, uh, that I can use Connor to sort of demonstrate. Alright. So, let's move on, shall we? Um, Forbidden Legend, Reforge the Galder Amulet. I think that's going to take us all the way back over here to Reachwater Rock. And I think we're going to have some Draugr to fight. Um, and now that our Sneak Mastery is up a little higher, we can I can kind of demonstrate how this looks and how this works a little better. Not that the Dramora Honor Guard are going to help us out at all in our sneaky endeavors, but, you know. And honestly, I really don't remember how much of a dungeon crawl this is till you get to the very end. But uh, I'm willing to find out. So just bear with me here on this stretch of this episode and if we have time to do another dungeon crawl we will do another dungeon crawl seeing as how this is the last of the episodes for this series um, I don't mind taking a little extra time if we need it Okay, a little bright. Let's turn off night vision, and we're going to take a look at that Emerald Dragon Claw we just picked up. And it looks like we're doing Bear, Whale, Snake. Bear, Whale, Snake. Bear, Whale, Snake. Whale, Snake. There we are. Hopefully we get some stuff to fight. Where's our second honor guard at? Oh well, he'll catch up eventually, I suppose. Wow, they really got this stuff locked away, don't they? Where's your buddy, man? Sneak archery is so overpowered in this game, we probably don't need any minions at this point, but this is a conjuration. Oh, what? The Ivory Claw. Uh, now I remember this. I'm not going all the way back to Ryxen to pick up that Ivory Claw, so I'm just going to console in another one. Hope you don't mind. Oh, jeez, really? I can't console in an Ivory Claw? Oh, Ivory Dragon Claw, that's why.
There it is. A, B, 7, B, B, and we'll do one of them. Okay. Uh, and on this guy, we have Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. there, doesn't it? Okay, maybe that unlocks when we're done with the uh, with these bozos in here. You know, I'm just going to conjure another one of these guys. I don't know where that second one got hung up, but I'd rather be safe than sorry at this point. <laughs> I was looking for my uh, night eye hotkey there, so I took my eyes off the screen for a split second, and I ended up uh, in the drink. Here's some uh, nasally drogger up here. I think they're all of the Galderson brothers. Okay. Here he comes. Look out behind you. next? Jiric, maybe? Oh, no. We'll take care of... Oh, there goes an honor guard. I don't see them. Where are they? That's it for uh, Sigdis. The only one we have left is Jiric. Well, that was too easy. Oh, he's going to be teleporting all over the place. Did that end him? No, not yet. Daddy, you was not happy. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> and the completed intact Galder amulet. All right, let's take a look. Uh, this is one of the artifacts that is affected by Zim's immersive art attack. Art, art, <laughs> Zim's immersive heart attacks. There we go. Um, Zim's immersive artifacts. 
Where is it here? The Galder Amulet. So this isn't quite what it was uh, in the vanilla game. So it looks like it's just giving us a 10% boost to the progression of all skills. Um, and all skills are 10% more effective as well. You know, with an uncapper, where all of our skills cap at 255, I believe, or is it 355? Getting 10% more is uh, is pretty big on like every single one of them. It's pretty cool. Um, we're not using it. <laughs> we already have an amulet that we like a lot, and it makes us basically almost immune to magic, at least elemental magic. So we're not we're not going to be switching that out anytime soon. Okay, so that was kind of fun, but. It really wasn't that long of a dungeon crawl, so I think we have some time to do something else. I just got to figure out what the heck it is we're going to do. All right, why don't we do a uh, stillborn cave here? Uh, this is a Falmer hideout, um, and it tends to be a bit of a longer uh, little dungeon crawl there, so... That should give us plenty of opportunity to show off this playstyle a little bit. I mean, this is pretty straightforward, I gotta say. It's just sneak archery with uh, with the fallback of a couple of minions. They can take care of you if uh, stuff hits the fan. And your cover is blown. And you're just in an all-out pitch, like, battle. So that, that's really all there is to it. It's a sneaky archer that can handle his own in uh, <clears throat> open combat. But yeah, so uh, I will go ahead and, well, no need to cut the video, I don't think at this point. We're just going to fast travel anyway, which will only take a few seconds on this super speedy SSD. Uh, where'd it go? Stillborn Cave. Here we go. Oh, and I can level up again and take the uh, sneak attack perk. What's that called? Oh, and Connor's hungry too, of course. Sneak attack, that's what it's called. <laughs> uh, and we have two perks to, to, uh, to take here. Sneaking is 15% more effective against targets that are in combat with you, or 30% if they are in combat with somebody else. Your footsteps in equipped armor make 75% less noise when sneaking, but we already have a muffle effect on the ebony male. I like this one. Um, if for some reason our, our summons draw aggro before the enemy detects us, they are going to have 30%, a 30% harder time trying to detect us than, than they had before. Um, and if they think they have detected us and they're still looking for us, um, sneaking will be 15% more effective against them. So this kind of works pretty well, I think, for this build type, just because... Um, our summons do blow our cover every now and then. Let's get rid of one of these guys here. Looks like that second one finally caught up from wherever he was stuck on. That was odd. Um, oh yeah, Connor was hungry. Wasn't he? <clears throat> Looks like he's thirsty too. Okay, so really, brothers, only the best for Connor. He's a Breton after all. He's got expensive taste. I thought I heard something kind of deconstructing behind me. It looks like one of those older honor guard fell apart, finally expired or something, I guess. Go ahead and get another one out here. Just in case things get bad. I like to have two badasses in my corner instead of just one.
especially at the super high level we're playing at a legendary difficulty we do run into enemies from time to time that are insanely powerful and can do a lot of damage to just about anything Yeah, Electrosphere really works a lot better with Lion's Arrow than it does with Spell Scribe, in my opinion. Pretty happy with it. Of all the different traps in this game, this one looks like the most painful to me for some reason. Even more so than those like swinging gate traps with the spikes on them. Probably just because they're so like uh, jagged and brutal looking. Well, that's like he didn't go down all the way, even on the kill cam. Um, so the secondary effect that these uh, Honor Guard Dramora have is that they weaken uh, magic resistance of our enemies within, uh, I don't know, I don't remember what the radius was on it, um, 15 feet. So they have to be fairly close, but uh, it does help out the Electrospheres that come out of our bow. And when we do get into trouble and the enemies get close, that 15% does help. Yeah, I think this guy was the boss of the place. He went down with one sneak attack and the Electrosphere follow-up. Easy peasy. Yep, this place says it's cleared. Um, we have seen before, though, that just because it says it's clear doesn't mean necessarily that uh, there are no more enemies in the place, just that sort of the boss was, was beaten. But it looks like we may have actually cleared that place out. Alright, well there it is. Connor is a badass and an evil angel, apparently. <laughs> I still haven't found out if that terrifying noise that comes out when we enter combat, if it comes from the Ebony Male or if it comes from the Sotha's Maelstrom. Now there's nothing inherently evil or scary about Sotha's Maelstrom. Uh, it just refers to Sotha Sil, who was part of the um, Dunmeri Tribunal, who was not necessarily a bad guy. Uh, in fact, he was kind of a hero, I would say. Um, Oh boy. At least to the Dunmer people. Oh, they already killed him for me. Um, so I don't know why the terrifying screams would be coming from that. It does make more sense coming from the Ebony Male, which uh, would be a Boethia thing. And Boethia is kind of scary. She is kind of evil. Um, that's what I would expect anyway. 
I just didn't know that there was a special sound effect that came from it. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, sort of beside the point, because we are at the end of this series. How about that? Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm kind of glad that it's over, that we're uh, getting to the end of it. Um, I'm a little conflicted about it because it was so easy to create content for. All I had to do was do what I normally do. This is kind of how I naturally play when I'm just playing. It's therapeutic for me to kind of forget about stories and, and role-playing and stuff like that, even though I, I think almost objectively that's the best way to play this game. Um, but it's therapeutic for me to forget about all that stuff and just kind of focus on the numbers. I know that stresses some people out. <laughs> uh, probably most people are the opposite, but uh, I, got, I got one of those math brains, I guess, that, that like numbers and, and analyzing things. Um, so I'm going to miss it, but uh, I still get to do this for the uh, necromancy branches in the conjuration tree, so I have that to look forward to. Uh, the therapy continues, I suppose, with a with a new with a new series, pretty soon. Um, I also have the apocalypse stuff to look at too, and I, I might do the apocalypse summons uh, that video guide before I take on the necromancy stuff. And also, uh, I've been saying this for a long time now, but uh, but Chemical Whispers is coming soon. I'm getting very close to the point in that series, uh, in Alcunil's, Alcunil's Save, where I can start recording footage that goes along with uh, introductory dialogue, which I've already recorded, so I can start splicing that stuff together and get, get a few, uh, few... Ooh, he's wigging out there. He's going crazy from all the, from all the Daedra in his head. That's all right. Calm down there, buddy. Um, so yeah, that is that is coming pretty soon, and I'm excited for that because I think I got some good stuff in there. Uh, a cool story to tell, a cool concept, um, and some fun stuff as far as uh, Ordinator Alchemy and CACO go. All right, so that's it. I guess I'm going to sign out right now. Um, until next time, take care of yourself. Bye.